Hi, I'm Ruth Hanston and our discussion today will be about critical thinking and clinical judgment and that is section six in your professional practice specialist portfolio. So just let's take a step back and get a little background and think about what we've already done and think about uh, all the various surveys that we've asked you to do, the online studying, the reading that we've asked you to do, and at this point in the processes, you've had a chance to look at your own issues, your own professional practice concerns, uh, the, the professional practice of the area in which you lead or in which you practice. Uh, we've done some comparisons with the State Practice Acts. We've looked at such things as indicator tools so that you could evaluate the practice in your areas, um, teamwork tools. So we've given you an awful lot of information also about family-centered care and the impact of involving the patients and families in their care. So we've given you a lot of opportunity to, to begin to hone that um, consultant's viewpoint of how things are going in your particular area. So given that, it's now time to identify which problems or issues you've identified that you would like to use for your critical thinking problem. You may remember in section one and two we talked about stories and we talked about the importance of stories and we asked you to, to um, think of when you'll be turning in one story or example of practice to us for the end of the course, before the end of the course or at the end of the course so that you have um, you know, brought that forward for your compendium and for us to review. We're also asking you, there's two things that you turn in, the story, and then the second thing you turn in is your critical thinking problem. This can be a group problem, it can be a, a personal issue that you're working with, maybe I have trouble working with a, some one of the nursing assistants I'm working with, that's fine. Use that if you'd like. But in section six, we're really going through this six-step problem-solving model that we've developed over the years. And this, this um, has been developed, gosh, it's been like, you know, 15 years ago, I think, that we've developed it, we've changed it, we've worked with it based on the research that we've seen for about neurobiology and thinking and, and how to be more effective in problem-solving. So, um, if you're with us, um, it's page 29. In, in your portfolio, or around that, depending on the, the iteration of portfolio they have, that says Section 6, Critical Thinking. Um, in Appendix 3 of your portfolio, there's also an overview of critical thinking that you can read very quickly, that um, you can also get credit for, CE credit for online if you so desire, um, that is in section, the Appendix 3 of your portfolio. So we want you to read Clinical Delegation Skills Chapter 11, and Chapter 11 goes through a very long um, discourse on critical thinking and problem solving and evaluation of care, so um, that's a good support for you. We also like you to you know, make sure you know where to go for patient safety websites because um, there's certainly any kind of problem solving like this is supported by the um, National Patient Safety Foundation, by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, IHI, um, the LeapFrog Group, the, the VA um, Patient Safety Commission. So many different groups are working on patient safety nationally. Um, we'd like you to read the 2012-2013 um, patient safety goals. And so find the most current ones on, your, um, on the website. There's an overview. You can just review those for your particular area. Um, there's different ones for ambulatory care, surgery, for example, and different for acute care hospitals. And then we have Worksheet 10, which is one of the main parts of this course because once you've gone through all this assessment and evaluation, this is the time to actually put that information you've gathered to the test to solve the problem. Uh, you may be taking these issues and bringing them forward to your professional practice committee or your unit councils or committees or however you solve problems. If maybe you have a patient safety council that you might bring your issue to. Um, so wherever it might need to go, 
Um, remember that we don't want these to be problems that are just going to be, you know, put on a shelf or put in someone's drawer. But these are real life situations that you feel that you really have the heart to change. So I would like to just briefly go uh, through the six steps of the problem solving model now because I'd like to explain to you why the steps are in the order they are in and what that means for you. Uh, one of the things that we've learned about uh, neurobiology is that when we focus on outcomes, when we think about results or that vision of the future, that that outcomes focus help us, helps us solve problems more quickly just as we ask our patients and families what goals they have. So you'll see that that outcomes focus is in here. Um, we also try to make sure we're being creative in our problem solving using both sides of our brain. And so we're going to be asking you about what's good about the problem so that you move into that right creative side of your brain. So um, let's say, for example, if you're looking at this worksheet 10, um, let's go through these a really quick problem and, and one that I see frequently is um, that RNs and nursing assistants aren't um, working well together and maybe care is being omitted. So let's see how you might solve that problem. Maybe it's a way, you know, it could be partially how the way the assignments are being made or the, the staffing configuration or that kind of thing, but at this point we don't know that, we just know there's a problem, care is being omitted, and it's some of the tasks that nursing assistants should be doing. Okay, so let's use that as, as our problem. So number one is what signs tell you something's wrong. So what we've seen, if we were writing this down on a, uh, a flip chart, we would say that um, the exact nature of that problem or incident or error is that um, the tasks, some of the tasks are not being done, like ambulation or mouth care or um, chem strips or vital signs. Um, and, and so what would be the, the bullet points there? You see that we're asking you to do some emotional intelligence um, processes here. And that means that we think about our own frame of reference, our own um, attitude and assumptions that we might be way, making that would contribute to the way we look at this problem. Now if I'm a, a novice nurse and I'm not sure about my delegation skills and, and I don't feel comfortable giving feedback, my frame of reference might be, hey, I'm new at this, maybe other people are seeing the nursing assistants doing those tasks and I'm not. Um, do I have an attitude? Yes. I, I feel really, um, you know, very humble. I don't want to ask people to do things. Um, are there assumptions? Have I verified the evidence? Do I know that these tests are not being done? And I could, let's just say I do know that. Um, but I may or may not know whether that's happening with other folks, it, with other RNs and nursing assistants. So I might want to then verify the evidence. The reasons the problem might exist. This is the fourth bullet down and it's a really important point. When we're solving problems, if we don't get to the core reasons or, or um, the root causes, perhaps, of what could be going wrong and research those, we may not be solving the right problem. So, for example, the reasons the problem might exist is maybe I don't know how to delegate and supervise and use checkpoints and debriefing very well because I'm a new grad. Maybe um, we don't have enough nursing assistants and they're totally overwhelmed and there's no possible way they could do the work that we're asking them to do. Maybe, number three, we're assigning people poorly and maybe um, number four, maybe the nursing assistants aren't doing the work they're supposed to be doing and they're, in, they're texting their friends or doing Facebook in the laundry room. We don't know. So those are possibilities. The second question is, what is good about this situation? And this is where we're asking you to move into your creative right brain. So three things that are good about the situation. Well, um, number one, uh, we have we think we have enough nursing assistants and number two, they're really motivated people who care about their patients very much and they're hard workers. Number three, maybe um, maybe I know that um, we do have a problem with assignments that I'm not sure how those should be made so that we can best use the folks that we have available. That could be uh, number three, maybe most of the work is getting done. So you can think about different things that actually bring you up out of the depths of, oh my gosh, we have another problem, to, oh, hey, I think we can solve this problem, and here are some of the strengths we can work with. So three things that are good about a situation. 
what should be happening instead of what is happening. And so these, I want to make sure I'm looking at my goals or how will I measure my success. So I'm going to measure the success by looking back at the things that I noticed were wrong. So if we're going in order here, we might say, hey, all the tasks are being done. Um, ambulation is happening, mouth care is happening, vital signs are recorded so that I can really look at them and, and um, make some assessment decisions around those. So that's how we will know if the problem is solved. Um, fourthly, um, define the problem. So we might need to really research um, our, you know, what are the issues here? Uh, do we want to talk to other people? Do we have enough information to proceed? I might want to interview some of the other RNs, or maybe I take the teamwork performance tool and get some information about whether or not the RNs feel that, that the tasks are being done with their patients, what the nursing assistants feel about, you know, whether or not they're, they're overloaded, if they get adequate communication from the RNs. Um, you know, maybe those are some of the issues that we need to actually address in the problem solving. Fifthly, determining accountability and ownership. This is where we figure out if I'm supposed to be solving this problem alone, do I need anyone else to help me, what other departments might be involved in solving this problem, and then um, you know, really knowing should I, you know, is this even my issue or should I be involved? And if it affects you, your patients, or your team goals, yes, I think that it is something you might want to be involved in. Number six, what can be done about it? So based on what I've identified the problems to be, I might say, you know what, um, immediate correction is today I've got to make sure I give good initial direction, set up checkpoints, and give feedback and debrief. Um, and supervise whether the care is being done. So that might be a short-term possible solution for me personally. Um, Long-term, you know, how are we going to make sure we're assigning people directly and, and in a way that makes sense? Um, is, is there an adequate number of assistive personnel? How can we as RNs pick up some of the slack if we don't have that kind of staffing? You know, so figuring out um, how you can work more effectively together and get those tasks done would be a part of what you might want to do as far as problem solving. So what we're asking you to do in this program then is to figure out what problems you have concerns about and then go through this six step problem solving model in order so that you can really get those synapses together in a, in a, uh, you know, in a road <laughs> along your brain there that shows you that you're really incorporating your own emotional intelligence issues around your own uh, framework of uh, frame of reference, your attitudes and assumptions, really looking at what's good about the problem so you get into that creativity, looking at the goal, you know, what outcomes are we looking for and how will I know if the problem is solved? Because all of those things are part of creating better thinking and critical thinking and judgment. And we'd like you to submit an electronic form of this and a Word document um, would be best if you could to us. Um, at the Rock office. So um, that's uh, either to me, Ruth at Hanston.com, or Kathy Watkins, Kathy Watkins at Hanston.com. You can send that in, but please copy me and also whoever is coordinating your program in your facility so they know you've handed that in. There's a sample critical thinking problem in, in your uh, portfolio for you so that you can see what some other people have done with their problem solving. And it doesn't have to be a dissertation, it doesn't have to be a master's thesis, you don't have to go and get, you know, resources from the web or, you know, read uh, scientific journals. So, but that, this is the overview of what we would like you to do with that critical thinking problem solving. So, if you have any questions about this, if you think, gee, I don't know if this is a problem I should be attempting or do I need help with this, um, please let us know and just shoot us off an email or call us and we'll get back to you. But um, certainly we've had every number of wonderful problems being solved. If problems can be wonderful, we've solved many of them. So um, thank you for joining us on this discussion of Section 6, Critical Thinking Problem Solving.